Yo, 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 welcome back, welcome back, man, yo, I ain't gonna lie, it's a lot of craziness going on, <laughs> the world just, I mean, it keeps on spinning, don't get me wrong, it will continue to spin, but damn, we living in some weird times, huh. uh, so, I felt like, I kind of just like give y'all a Monday rundown. Just kind of talk about some of the things that have caught my eye uh, over the past few days or whatnot. Um, and first, this is a, a, a historical event. And I definitely thought it'd be cool to kind of tell y'all about it because it's going to be happening all week or whatnot. But for the first time ever, the United States Supreme Court is being live streamed, y'all. Now that is very, very interesting, right? Like... It's just crazy, like, wow, like, okay. We've always had law proceedings on TV. We've always had, like, you know, crime court and all that kind of stuff. But now we're actually getting a chance to look in, live streamed, uh, of the Supreme Court. And not just, like, little cases. There's two important cases this week. Um, one is about our president and his financial and his tax information and whether or not he will have to provide that to us. I know, right? Cray cray. Um, and then also, the other one is about presidential electors, and whenever they're casting their ballot, if they have to go with the popular vote of the state, or if they can basically just kind of be an outcast and just put it to you know whoever they want, and stuff like that, which I don't really see a reason for that. If that's the point, why do we even have us voting? Anyways, so that's what's going to be heard this week. Today, um, there was a, a small case over, I think, branding and trademarking for um, Booking.com. Um, there are two... Two lawyers going at it. I'm not too familiar with who they are. I believe their names are Erica Ross and Lisa Blatt. Um, so yeah, just be on the lookout. Like for the first time ever, we'll get a chance to actually see a case done by the Supreme Court live in front. Like I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little giddy about this because it's so interesting to me. I've always wanted to see this. And apparently, old uh, Uncle Ruckus himself. <laughs> Clarence Thomas. He uh he decided to speak, and I guess he asked some questions during today's uh, hearing and stuff like that. And that's just interesting, you know. He he'd be silent. I think he was silent for like ten years, and he's been silent again for like a year and and yeah, some shit like that. So, anyways, um, but yeah. So if twenty twenty wasn't bad enough with the Jumanji game going on, we got Murder Hornets, y'all. Like, this is just stupid, okay? Now, they've been around, apparently, since December. There are, like, four sightings in uh, Washington, and that's kind of where they're maintained at right now. But, like, come on. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, things are starting to get to a point where people are like, you know what? All right, I know shit's kind of crazy, but, you know, it's starting to die down. And then, nope, 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 here we go. <laughs> now, I want to say, you're not automatically going to die from a sting. Uh, there is a guy named Coyote on YouTube, and he's actually shown a video of what happens when you get stung one time by them. It's like a huge, you know, red welt looking nasty ass thing or whatnot. Now, multiple stings can kill you, whether or not you're allergic to, you know, bees and stuff like that. And they are themselves killing a lot of honeybees. It's said that their stingers can even puncture the uh, beekeeper's outfit, so... It's a very, very serious situation. Washington State University has been tasked with trying to find ways to encapsulate them, to keep them from kind of spreading. Um, and uh, it says in Japan that up to at least 50 people a year can die from these mugs. So, I mean, like, y'all, be very, very careful because if it ain't one damn thing, it's a fucking another. No, I'm just playing. Um, so... This uh, next thing I want to talk about is kind of kind of interesting. So <sighs> there's an opinion piece out, and it kind of points the fingers at liberals and kind of calls out their hypocrisy because it would appear that um, Senator Biden has finally spoken out about the sexual accusations against him by Mrs. Tara Reid, and as right on cue, he has denied them categorically, saying it never happened. This, that, and the other. Now, we all have an issue with this for one simple reason. 
because if it was this cut and dry, this simple, this clear, then all he has to do is unseal his Senate papers. But he refuses to. Now, within those Senate papers could be the smoking gun that reveals that she did make this testimony or she did say this at the certain time that he's saying that she didn't. And that is very interesting that he refuses to unseal these because he says there's nothing personal about them and they would just be used for political fodder. It, it, it seems like a poor choice of diversion. But the bigger point is liberals and Democrats and left wing, yeah, left wing, left leaning, whatever you want to call it, people jumped and rallied behind the Me Too movement and rightfully so. But that doesn't just extend to when Republican men do wrong things. That is also when Democratic men do wrong things. They should be held to the exact same standard. Now, when it comes to all women must be believed, all women, it seems to fall real short when it comes to Tara Reid and her accusation. And it seems like other people have kind of corroborated the story as well. So it's a very, very glaring eye on the liberal hypocrisy that's going on right now. It's like, look, y'all cannot be saying, well, Trump does this and Newt Gingrich and all these other, you know, Republican people. And then once, you know, something happens on the left, it's like, well, you know, yeah, boys will be boys. No, you can't say that, Pelosi. You can't say Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Actual quote. That's not an answer. Like, you got to hold this man accountable. And that might mean knocking his ass off the docket. And no, I'm just playing. That ain't gonna happen. But I'm just saying, though, in all actuality, like, if y'all want us to be serious about voting for your candidate, you have to be serious about actually presenting him. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay. Um, this next one, really the last one, um, it, it's kind of a, it is a positive story. But I must warn you that there is sensitive, sensitive content in the next story that I'm about to speak about. Okay, now, it has happened in Sudan that female genital mutilation has been criminalized, okay? Yes, now there's been efforts to attempt to do this for a while, but they always kind of fell flat. Um, there was a leader, Omar al-Bashir, and he just did not want to go with it because obviously there's a whole bunch of cultural reasons for why FGMM, FGM is still being done. Um, so he was toppled in 2019 by women-led forces and they were able to do certain things. They were able to change legislation that didn't allow them to dress the way that they wanted to. And now they were able to get this huge, huge one done. Now, how big? 87% of all Sudanese women between the ages of 16 and 49 have been through the process of female genital mutilation, which is nothing more than the removal of partial or all of the clitoris, the inner and outer labia, or the stitching and the narrowing of the vaginal opening. <sighs> there is no earthly reason why this barbaric procedure is allowed to go on. And the only reason that it is still being carried out is because of cultural beliefs that it will make a woman a better marriage prospect as if she has nothing else to offer the world other than laying down for a cattle-style reproductive life. This is ridiculous, pathetic, it's archaic. And the fact that not enough people like myself, and I mean men, are speaking about it is an issue that I want to bring up. Because there are things that we can't fathom, that we have no idea, things that are going on right now that we need to be aware of, that we need to speak about, and that we need to bring awareness to. So, big ups to the women in Sudan for this happening. Shame on Sudan for it taking so long.